Hi guys, David Michael here. I've got a wonderful late fall, early winter mushroom for you guys. This is the famous bluet mushroom, Clytocybe nuata. It does have a look-alike that you have to be careful for, which is the Cortinarius. And I'm gonna give you a quick checklist here of things to look for to make sure you don't get the poisonous version. If you uproot this mushroom, you start to see the mycelia and the white hairs that's kind of in the leaf litter that they grow in. See those white hairs? That's one key identifying feature. The Cortinarius will tend to have an orange hue right here on the stem where the partial veil remnant is. Usually, this mushroom has purple hues to it. And this is kind of a beautiful specimen here. You can see the blue purple hues to it. As it gets older and ages, you can see the margins start to fade to a tawny biscuit color. You can see the white hairs in this. Now, the final checklist, of course, is going to be the spore print. This is a mushroom that you're going to want to spore print and the reason that you want to spore print it is the Cortinarius blooms at the same time. The Cortinarius blooms usually in the same spot and the Cortinarius has a rust to a rusty brown spore print but the bluet has a buff or nude spore print. So definitely do your spore print and definitely spore print until you get familiar with the mushroom, each of the mushrooms that you find, because you can have Cortinarius growing among these mushrooms. Personally never seen it, but I've read about that several times. An excellent mushroom to learn, worth your time. And I am gonna have Dawn go over to some of these larger blooms and show you how they fade, how they're different colored. There's a couple over here and a couple here. I wanted to show you guys how to do a proper spore front. Um, we got a bunch of elm oysters here, which aren't really oysters, but they're delicious. I'm not gonna spore print these. I'm 100% sure on those. Besides, if there's a mushroom that you need to spore print, it's those that you're not 100% sure of. These mushrooms usually give me good spore prints, so I have some black paper here. Forgive my herb table, I still have herbs that I'm putting up. But I have black paper here and white paper here. And when it comes to the bluet mushroom, what I tend to do, and you can see these beautiful purplish blue hues to it, which is indicative of the Cortinarius and the Bluet. These tend to grow in leaf litter, heavy leaf masses, um, and so does the Cortinarius. So what I do is I get rid of the stem because we're not going to eat it anyway but I look at the stem before I harvest it and I'm looking for like an orangish ring around it. And that orangish ring will be the bale remnant and the spores dropping onto it from the Cortinarius that kind of paint that fuzzy section of the stalk, the color of its spores. Now when we harvested these, I could see where mushrooms were stacked on top of one another and I was moving leaves back. The whitish to buff spore color from the mushrooms. So I'm expecting the spore color of this to be white to nude, which is kind of
pinkish. I never did like the buff when it comes to reading in mushroom books because what is buff exactly? Well, it varies between white, pink, to even a hue of yellow. But in the morning, I will show you the results of this. I have them both on white paper and I have them on black paper just to give you an array of what spore prints will look like. These are late fall oysters and they're some of the most beautiful specimens I've ever found. And I am spore printing them because it's the color is just a little odd for me and I want to really narrow down exactly what species this is. So it's a late fall oyster. I'm pretty positive of that. We're going to do the spore print on it. I'm going to be exactly sure that I have that. And we'll just show you guys in the morning exactly what goes on. I want to give a shout out to Mike Prue for giving me a call about these bluets and letting Dawn and I hunt the property. We ended up with a lot of pounds. I'll give a shout out to Mark and Stephanie who went out and helped us gather all these elm oysters. So I'll see you guys in the morning. Spore print is final. I'm going to show you guys. I used white paper and black paper. I'm going to show you the difference. I think it's just kind of uh, a way to allow you to choose whether or not you want to use white and or black for various species of mushrooms. These are the bluets. And if you look right here on the table, how that just swirled out, there was no mushroom there. That's how spores travel. You see here on the table, how they escaped. They just swirl out away from the mushroom. Now these mushrooms are perfectly good to eat, but the spore print, they call this buff pink to white. It's called buff in most identification books. And we don't have any rust brown. I knew these weren't going to be rust brown. I knew they weren't cortinarius. I just took these guys usually give such great spore prints that I wanted to just show you and use these as the example. And look at the spores there. Now, right here on this black paper, I had three late fall oysters, and on the white paper, I had two, and you can barely see the yellow spore print and the yellow ring. You almost need a magnifying glass to see it, but you see, some mushrooms just don't leave a lot of spore on your spore print, and some of them just go crazy, like the bluet. The cortinarius does the same, and if these would have been the quartz, it would have been a really, really orange, rusty brown but once you get really familiar with the mushroom and you've harvested these a few times, I think you'll find that the key identifying features are pretty close. And then also when I harvested these and I cut them, you could see the leaves where I cut them were just stained with this spore print. So a lot of times you can look under the mushroom in good leaf litter. If it's a dark, dark um, spore, usually don't but like with honey mushrooms a lot of times when they're layered on top of one another the lower honeys will be white from the spore print and the same thing with the leaf litter here in these bluets you can see the spore print when you're harvesting them a lot of times but they leave such a good spore print i couldn't pass up the opportunity to show you guys how to do a spore print and i couldn't pass up the opportunity to show you whether or not you wanted to use black or white. Now, obviously when you have lighter colored spore prints for mushrooms and you're expecting it to be lighter colored, um, you'd want to use black over white. I use both, depends on the mushroom. Um, when you suspect that a spore print is going to be white, but you're unsure, put one mushroom on black and put one mushroom on white and that will basically not backfire on you. If, if it happens to be one or the other, white won't show up on white without getting a magnifying glass and then you've wasted 24 hours of your time. Anyway, bluets all the way into December where I'm at in Southern Michigan. They have a 
lavender hue to them when they're young. But these are still fresh and moist and good. So, But it is tough to clean the leaves off the top of them. And a lot of times when you're hunting them, you really got to gently pull back on the leaves and make sure that you don't step on any or crush any. Safe and happy foraging, everybody.